A powerful earthquake and several aftershocks have leveled the city of Amatrice, Italy. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Christina James. I'm Sam Shane. That earthquake was a magnitude 6.2 on the Richter scale. 159 people now confirmed dead. More are expected and rescue crews are working now to pull the injured from the rubble there. It is quite the scene to say the very least. The town of Amatrice has a population of a little more than 2,500 people. It's located less than 100 miles northeast of Rome. Now we have team coverage on the earthquake tonight. We'll join meteorologist Lisa Meadows in just a moment. But first, CBS 13's Angela Masalam is live at the hot Italian restaurant in Midtown where the owners are stepping in to help. Angela? Well, Sam Christina, Hot Italian is hosting a fundraiser today at all three of its locations to help victims of this earthquake. We also spoke to another woman who has not been able to reach one of her friends so far, and she lives in this devastated area. Maybe she's not by her phone, maybe she doesn't want to be on her phone, uh, maybe she's not on WhatsApp, or maybe something worse. It's tough for Patrizia Cerruti not to think of the worst when she can't get a response from her friends in Norcia, Italy. And this is Aquila, where the big, big earthquake happened. One of the towns devastated by the earthquake early Wednesday morning. If you have Wi-Fi and you have a password-protected account, please go on and take out your passwords. Please. Everybody open up everything so that if someone is stuck and they have a phone, they have any way to get through to say, I'm here, I'm alive. But for the people Cheruti did get a hold of. I did reach Perugia and they were affected. Um, they had, you know, lots of tremors and they're really afraid for the tremors because the tremors uh, in these kind of structures just bring down more um, rocks and, and more things that can injure people. Cerruti was born and raised in Italy and says, like California, earthquakes are a part of life. She says what makes earthquakes like the one on Wednesday especially worrisome is the historic architecture of the buildings. But that's what made this particularly devastating because all of these buildings are totally un unreinforced. Andrea Lapore co-owns Hot Italian in Midtown Sacramento. Both she and her business partner have family living around central Italy where the earthquake hit. It's obviously um, really tragic and, and you want to be able to help in any way you can. In an effort to reach out to their native homeland, all three hot Italian restaurants in Northern California are hosting a fundraiser all day Wednesday to help the victims of the tragedy. When something um, like that hits, um, a country that we are so closely connected with, it's, it's um, pretty important for us. And 100% of the proceeds made at Hot Italian today will go to benefit the Italian Red Cross. As for Ciruti, she's flying out to Italy next week to check on her friends and family. Let's hope there's a big turnout tonight, to say the very least, would be great. Mm -hmm. All right, Angela, thank you so much. Uh, rescue teams and volunteers are digging through mountains of debris where homes once stood. A 10-year-old girl was pulled alive from the rubble some 17 hours after that quake struck. In one city, large slabs of concrete fell from buildings, trapping people and crushing cars. CBS 13 spoke to an engineer in Italy who talked about the rescue efforts. Um, rescue people uh, that go that are uh, uh, rescuing uh, affected people there, and uh, the governments and also um, uh, military and uh, policemen and uh, fire uh, um, also all all the police corps uh, that we have. Now, the Italian premier is also expected to head to the earthquake zone, zone very soon. Here in California, we know all too well about fault lines. CBS 13 meteorologist Lisa Meadows now following the earthquake, and she joins us in the newsroom with how Italy's fault lines affected this earthquake. Lisa? I think it's definitely important to note, as we were just hearing, the difference between the two areas. Even though we still have those types of earthquakes here, a lot of our structures are a lot more reinforced as opposed to buildings there. Now, when it comes to the faults, there's a difference there as well. That had us wondering, what is the difference between fault lines, say, around here, or as opposed to the fault lines that we've seen actually out into that area. And what we've seen the difference would be where we have a strike slip between the two. So one fault line may be a strike slip fault line, and that's where you're getting basically the two different edges of these tectonic plates rubbing up against each other. Whereas another type of fault line is where you can get one plate basically going up and the other going down, or basically a vertical push between the two. So what we see here in California would be the horizontal movement of plates as opposed to what they more so often see in that area in the world in Italy would be more so where you're getting movement of the plates up and down. Back to you. Which uh, sounds like it would be more dramatic and traumatic mm -hmm. to experience. All right, Lisa, thanks very much for that.